So I got asked to do some wedding place names uh, for a student that I used to teach, and this is definitely outside my comfort zone. So this video is most definitely wedding name calligraphy for beginners, definitely. So the first thing that I did with the brown place cards that I got sent was measure them out. So I first of all measured so I had a center line, a pencil line that went right through the center that would be the middle line. And then I did a line top and bottom of that that would be one centimeter above and one centimeter below. And then I measured the very center of the card so I knew where obviously each name's center would be to try and get the names as centered on the card as possible. Then I decided to sketch each name out first of all before I went in with any kind of a calligraphy pen or a calligraphy marker. Um, so I used a 2B pencil, mechanical pencil to do this. And what I tried to do was judge with each name or each word, in this instance bride, where the center of it was so that I could put that kind of center letter right by the mark that I'd made in the center of each card. But this was a little bit difficult because of course each big fat capital letter that started the, each name or each word almost was like two or one and a half to two letters. So it was a bit more difficult to judge exactly where the center of each one was going to be. But that's why I was penciling everything out in the first place. And I'm also using a typeface, or I'm trying to use a typeface here called Isabella, but it's, it's a slightly changed typeface. And next up was deciding which calligraphy kind of pen to use, because I had three ideas in mind. So first up, I chose the uh, Faber-Castell Pit Pen, and it's a Pit Calligraphy Pen. So here I am, and you know, conventional wisdom says that when you're using a calligraphy pen, you should hold the nib at a 45 degree angle. But I thought for this, I almost had to hold it um, kind of totally horizontal in order to get the kind of lines that I wanted. Um, anybody watching this who's a pro in, in doing calligraphy lettering and so on, I do apologize um, for you know, what you're about to see. But this was me just finding my way with it, really. That's why I say it's a beginner's um, kind of video to how to do um, calligraphy and wedding uh, planner calligraphy. And don't worry, these were all tryouts. So these are all rough attempts just to see which one was going to work, first of all. So after that one, I decided I would try a proper manuscript wide metal nib, so a proper calligraphy type nib with a kind of loadable um, ink cartridge pen, like a fountain pen. Uh, and even though this was described as a wide nib, I found that, yeah, it moved really smoothly across the, uh, the card and everything, but it didn't give me as wide a line as I wanted. It did give me very, very thin lines in places. Uh, but the other thing that I found was it bled a little on the card stock um, that I've been sent that I was using. Um, so I was a little bit, mm, you can see it there on the D, uh, not a big fan of this because it wasn't wide enough for what I wanted and also it, the bleed was gonna cause me problems. So I was like, okay, two down, let's try a bit of a kind of a curveball here, a um, bit of a wild card. And I chose to have a go with the Pentel brush pen because um, I knew I could get thin lines and thick lines, but obviously not maybe calligraphy type ones. Um, and this was probably my favorite one to use. By pressing down quite hard, as you can see, I could get a nice thick line, and by using it really gently and lightly, I could get a really thin line. So I love the kind of variety of line. You know I love the brush pen anyway, but I love the variety line I could get. But unfortunately, as you can see here, when I have to correct the top of the R and the I, there was quite a bit of bleed again on this cardstock. It's, it's a lovely free flowing ink out of the brush pen, but unfortunately that meant on some cardstock, it would bleed a little bit too much. So even though this was my favorite one to actually do the letters with and also favorite one to use, um, I realized that the one that I was gonna have to go with was probably going to be the, um, the very first one. So I had three different tools. So which one was best? Now, this is purely based on the card that I was using, what I had to do, but I love the Faber-Castell Pit Calligraphy Pen because of the thickness of the lines. It looked really, really nice and bold, and it bled the least of the lot. This one in the close-up, you can see several points with the manuscript nib where it bled a little bit, and also here with my fave, the Pentel Brush Pen, you could see that also had too much of a bleed and wasn't crisp enough. So I had quite a bit of practice with the Faber-Castell um, Pit Calligraphy Pen, and I ended up doing all of them uh, I'm very pleased with them all, uh, but I felt they needed something more. So here's where I turned to the Sakura Jelly Roll pen, a white gel pen, and decided I was gonna add some white gel lines to make everything stand out a little bit more. So the first thing I had to do with each card was rub out gently all of the pencil lines, and then get in there with the, the white gel pen. So what I decided to do was kind of act as though it was a light source shining on the, uh, the word, and I decided the best thing to do was thinking of a clock face, was the light is shining onto the word from around, say, 10, 11 o'clock. 
um, if I'm looking at this at the center, so we're talking sort of upwards, you know, the light source hitting it from the top left. So I approached every single name as though the light source was coming in from the top left hand side. And hopefully when I was putting the white gel pen on, you can see that it's giving it a nice edge. Obviously the fact that it was on a brown card as well helped because that allowed me to use a white and a black combo to show uh, you know, a little bit of extra something with this. If it was on white card, I would have possibly had to do maybe a fine black line as a sort of like, you know, little kind of shadow effect like I've seen on some calligraphy or some italic kind of lettering. You might also be watching this and thinking, why doesn't he do those white lines in like a single stroke of the pen? Why is he doing this sort of back and forth, back and forth kind of motion? Well, what I found was if I tried to do um, the, the white lines in a single, you know, confident stroke of the pen, uh, first of all, I wasn't quite confident enough to do that. But second of all, it didn't give such a strong white line. It's like if you did a quick stroke of the pen, perhaps not enough of the ink was able to come out and, you know, give you that really bright white. So I found that the best way to use it was this sort of gentle back and forth, back and forth, back and forth kind of motion. Uh, and that gave me a much stronger, thicker white line out of the gel pen. I had a lot of fun doing these uh, words, all the calligraphy, all the little white bits and everything. Um, if you're watching this and you are really good at calligraphy and you're substantially better than me at it, then feel free to leave a comment at the bottom suggesting any you know, hints, tips and improvements for the future because I might get asked to do some more of these wedding names and I would really like to. Um, so any kind of advice would be gratefully received. So there you go, just another 72 of those. Uh, and I was done, and it wasn't all plain sailing. I had to redo Bride about three times. And the other reason for this video is a massive big thank you because I've recently hit 5,000 subscribers. Uh, I really appreciate all the comments and all the interest that you show in the videos and of course all the subscribing. I know it takes time and I appreciate it. If you're anything like me, you've got a watch later list of about 50 plus videos on YouTube and it takes time to watch, catch up and leave a comment on the videos that you enjoy. So I really, really appreciate it. And this is my super high-tech orange post-its of power. And this is my to-do list of videos for the upcoming year. I know it's mega, mega high-tech. Uh, and on this, I record everything that I've got an idea to do or ideas that people suggest in comments um, on the actual YouTube channel. So, you know, I've got everything on here. Lots more flower stuff coming your way. Um, one in one, one color, real time. Coloring large areas with a pro marker. Real time watercolors. Um, a mixed media combo that I'm not sure how I'm going to do. Um, brush pen with lots of big fat close ups. Um, and also some of the stuff I've been given recently, like ink text blocks and also uh, squirrel hair brushes. I want to do some, you know, first go videos looking at how you use those as it were straight out of the box. How do they go? Um, so, you know, I've got this list. I keep adding to it all the time and hopefully I can do more of these videos for you guys this year. Thank you so much for watching.